Hello everyone, Lloyd Reber here again with my next Q workshop video. Probably one of the very first questions people ask who are learning Q is where did the statements for a Q sort come from? The answer is simply the concourse for the topic. So the next obvious question is, what's a concourse? A concourse is every possible viewpoint or expression that can be made about a topic. A, a concourse is, at least theoretically speaking, potentially infinite. But like most things in life, we make decisions about when we have gathered enough statements to say with some confidence that we have captured all of the relevant viewpoints. Evidence of this is usually when you are reaching the point of saturation or when you are not finding anything new despite your efforts to do so. After the concourse has been developed, we will then take great care in drawing a sample of statements from the concourse for use in the Q-sort. The group of statements used in the Q-sort is known either as the Q-sample or the Q-set. The importance of developing the concourse well for a Q-study cannot be overstated. The concourse is the foundation upon which the rest of the Q-study relies. If you do a poor job here, then there is no way to recover later on. So, it behooves us to take some time to consider how to go about developing a concourse. Let's use an example to help us understand how to develop a concourse. I think uh, most Q studies are best served with topics that lead to divergent types of opinions or viewpoints. So here's a good one. What are your views on immigration to the, uh, to the USA? So uh, if you have been uh, following any of this, and if I guess if you turn on the, uh, the talking heads or listen to uh, some of the most radical voices on social media, you tend to have uh, these two uh, polar opposites. One might be build the wall, close the borders. On the other side, allow unrestricted immigration, open the borders. But um, I think we all know that uh, intelligent conversations on this topic are probably taking place somewhere uh, in the middle. And, you know, even drawing this little graphic here of a, of a straight line with uh, the two dots at the extreme edges, I think is actually kind of misleading because that tells us that this is a one-dimensional type of topic. And if anything, it is, it is multi-dimensional. So why don't we uh, first take a look at this very same topic, but with two dimensions? So let's have a circle in this case. And you can kind of see if I started uh, getting viewpoints at these uh, extremes on the edges where we would see build the wall, close the borders on one side and allow unrestricted immigration, open the borders on the other. There's a lot of other spaces in here that viewpoints would uh, could be found. So we can imagine beginning to do um, really paying attention to everything we're hearing uh, and finding every source that might be talking about this particular topic. And as I do so, you might see uh, some clustering in different places, like you might see a little clustering of viewpoints near the top there. So maybe we have a, a whole other kind of dimension going on. Maybe it has something to do with, with uh, economic issues. Uh, certainly farmers in different parts of uh, the USA that have crops that come in and fruits and vegetables that need to be harvested need a lot of workers. And uh, maybe uh, Americans aren't willing to do those kinds of jobs. So we need to bring in people who are willing from other countries. So maybe there's another, another dimension there. And as I continue to uh, look for and document different, different uh, places where there are viewpoints, I start to see lots more beginning to uh, form. And again, maybe there's some clusters there as well. But I think the main point as you look at the graphic right now is that you want to make sure that you have uh, captured all of the relevant statements or viewpoints that might exist related to this particular topic. You should not be seeing large gaps in, uh, in the conceptual map of the topic. You should have a good coverage uh, all across the different viewpoints that are there. Now, are there really only two dimensions here for this topic? Well, I think not. So I'll end this particular example by imagining it as having at least three dimensions, and therefore we would have a sphere. And maybe it has four or five, six dimensions. And, I, and of course, I can't represent that visually on the screen. But I hope you get the idea that it is very important that you do the hard work needed to find and capture all of the expressions or viewpoints about the topic that might exist.
I think two good metaphors for the act of really searching and finding and capturing all of the different viewpoints or expressions about a topic are the metaphors of harvesting or mining. And it just takes a mindset of looking or listening in a very careful way. For example, here's an article that was in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette a while back about an incident where a six-year-old was accused of shooting his teacher with a gun. And as I read the article, I just couldn't help but uh, kind of dissect it. And as I was reading it, I found all of these different statements that began to get, give me the range of viewpoints that people probably were having about this particular topic. So, for example, we just don't know what to do about violence by small children. Or the problem is too many guns. Or no, the problem is the collapse of the nuclear family. Or no, the problem is violent music and video games. Or it's in the genes. But you get the idea that as you read or listen to different sources, you're going to find yourself with the uh, capability of actually being able to draw out uh, all kinds of expressions from those sources. There are times when it is appropriate to place artificial limitations on the boundaries of a topic. For example, you may want to build a concourse around the ideas found in a single book or video or podcast, assuming that the ideas found in each is rich and diverse. As another example, I've been helping one of my colleagues here at the University of Georgia use Q within one of his classes he teaches every year. In that class, he asks his student every, every week to read a small collection of articles that presents different viewpoints on the topic for that week. He has mined those articles to capture the range of ideas found in them. So students first read the articles and then complete a Q sort on the articles, the results of which become the basis for small and whole group class discussions. Okay, I hope you now have a good initial understanding of the idea of a concourse and some ways to go about developing it. It is not unheard of for a researcher to spend months or even years building and refining a concourse for use in a Q study. So be sure not to underestimate the time it will take you to build your concourse. Also be sure to document the sources that you used along the way so that you can defend and justify your argument that your concourse appropriately captures all of the views of your research topic.